President, welcome to Vion's Global Leadership Series, sir. Thank Good you. to have you on the show. India is thousands of kilometers away from your country, and yet Suriname is like a second home for Indians. How would you describe relations between the two countries? We have to put the relationship in a historic perspective. The yes, first sir. British India uh, indentured laborers arrived in Suriname in 1873 as workers on the plantations. And as such, the people we know now as Indians of Suriname are the, uh, have their ancestors in that group. There's also personal history and your relationship with India. You said that you visited India several times and were very close to a former prime minister. Tell our viewers about that. Well, it's, it's a long time ago. Wow. We visited India in 1983, uh, traveling through Russia for a non-aligned movement meeting in New Delhi. There I had the privilege to meet with Mrs. Indira Gandhi, then uh, Prime Minister of India. And it was a very pleasant meeting because it, it, it got a very special aspect when I indicated that Suriname has Indian people of Indian ancestry. It, uh, during the summit in New Delhi, I had the privilege of meeting with her several times. Unfortunately, she was not present when I became the chair of the meeting at that occasion. Yes, the relationship was so good that when she passed, uh, unfortunately, I had the privilege and the duty to be present at her funeral. So you've seen India change with its leaders, with its over the decades, uh, and now there's a new prime minister. He's been in office for four years, and I read some reports before coming here which said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi is very popular in Suriname, and people follow what he's doing with his country. What are your thoughts on that? As you know, Mr. Modi, the prime minister of India, is a well-known and very accepted personality in the international community. I must say that his popularity in Suriname is well established as a result of the fact that he has moved India ahead from being one of the powerful nations to a, a, a nation now at the international level. And more specifically, he is the one who has inspired the whole aspect of India being against any form of foreign and colonial dependence. I had the privilege of meeting with Mr. Modi personally in Brazil during the BRICS meeting held there in 2014. And in the margins of that meeting, I had the privilege of having lengthy conversations with him. We have learned that he might be visiting the Caribbean in, uh, in November of this year. And uh, we take this opportunity to say that we, he will have a very warm welcome in Suriname. I'm sure he liked that message. Uh, we had a president visit Suriname not very long ago. President Kovin was here. He celebrated International Yoga Day. How popular is yoga in this country? Yoga. Yoga is very popular in Suriname, and not only amongst the uh, people of Indian origin, but all over. And we have several centers here where yoga is practiced. And on the occasion of the visit of the president, it was a very special moment where two presidents could celebrate. It was a, a very unique occasion, and we enjoyed it extremely. As uh, President Govind said, when people practice yoga together, they become brothers. So me and the President of India have become brothers in that sense. I have continued with the practice, but unfortunately, time management as far as it is now didn't allow me to continue, but I have the intention to do so very soon. I must say that that day became unforgettable and I'm sure that our children and our grandchildren will remember this unforgettable day because it was a special moment of friendship that we cherish. Maybe it was very more special because 
uh, nature has wanted it, that he was born in the same month as uh, the president of Suriname, and uh, he was also born in the same month, as the, as the same year as the president of Suriname. That's interesting. Uh, another popular cultural export from India after yoga, or as much as yoga possibly, is Bollywood. How, how popular are Hindi movies here? It is, Bollywood is very popular in Suriname, and several TV stations don't do nothing else but put out Bollywood uh, movies throughout the day. So we see that uh, numerous people follow the movies. Of course, those of Indian industry have no problem understanding the text. But even others will enjoy the Bollywood movies, not just for this, the, the text and the cinema, but also because of the music and because of the fashion that is presented and which is very attractive to younger Surinamers. Which is your favorite film, if I may ask? My favorite? Film. Personally, I have a lot of time to watch films. The president has very little leisure time and in his leisure time he spends his time more reading than looking at cinema. The president has seen many uh, Indian movies, Bollywood movies, because 60, 58 to 60 years ago he was living in, uh, in the rural areas and in those areas the only films you could see at the cinema were Bollywood films. Yeah, in the in Indian film. So in his youth, he knew all the stars, the special stars, because that were the movies he saw. And of course, he doesn't know the modern ones and the new ones, except the, the name he just mentioned. But basically, uh, uh, what he knows about Indian movies is from his youth. How strong is the influence of Bhojpuri in, in the culture here, given that you, you just mentioned that a lot of people uh, Indian origin people came from Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, the, the belts in India would speak this language. So, uh, Bajpuri has been the, the source of the language spoken in Suriname by the, um, the, the people of uh, Indian origin, which is called Sarnami Hindi. And the main source of Sarnami Hindi is Bajpuri. So, we have quite a few Indian artists uh, who speak the language and who make music using the language. And one, Krish Ramkalawan, he's one of the most popular ones who also had the opportunity to, to perform during the, the visit of the president. And at that occasion, it went so well that he has a formal invitation to perform in India. The president uh, indicates that we are looking more at 80 million uh, of a credit line and the president is convinced that in applying and cooperating with India at a technical level will, will make it possible to make it mutually profitable for both countries. I can give you a very special example of that. We had to make and construct an electricity line of 30 kilometers, and the Western engineers, engineering companies, quoted us $25 million to do so. We have taken the initiative to approach India, and they constructed the 30 kilometer line for $13 million. So this is a very practical example where India has proven to be not only cheaper but delivering quality products at a reasonable price. We will use uh, the credit line uh, with an emphasis on developing the hinterland and specifically developing energy as an important sector because that is one of the key factors to for development. You mentioned energy. India and uh, Suriname are partners in the International Solar Alliance. What sort of potential do you see in that direction? In our view, solar 
power and the initiative of India was, was very welcomed by us because we are convinced that renewable energy is the future. Because if we keep using the present uh, fossil fuels, we are not only uh, spending a lot of money, but at the same time, it is the main source of pushing the wrong uh, gases into the universe. And for us to, to be able to deal with that, uh, solar energy and all forms of renewable energy are not only important for us, but important for the total survival of mankind on this planet. You mentioned visiting India for a meeting of the non-aligned movement. A lot of water has flown under the bridge since then, and India and Suriname have been diplomatic partners and, and have had ties over all these years, but President Kovin was the first Indian president to have visited this country. How do you see interests converge? How do you see platforms like these, for instance, the non-aligned movement? Is it still relevant in this day's uh, scheme of things? We believe that non-aligned movement at this point in time in history has lost importance uh, in the multilateral world we're living in, multipolar world we're living in. At the same time, the basic principles of the non-aligned movement remain very important for the future. And we think, and we feel, and we're convinced that reviving the non-aligned movement could mean a lot for the future of mankind. If we look at the mutual interest of both India and Suriname as nations, as part of the present world, we feel that the capabilities you have and the natural resources we have and the cooperation that we have shown so far and the fact that we are now developing a very strong friendship could mean a lot for both countries and the world. How big is the presence of the Chinese in this country? Heel, uh, heel erg. So basically, Suriname has developed strong ties with the BRICS uh, movement in the world. Uh, we, historically speaking, we have India here, of course, an older group, ethnic group within the Surinamese society is the Chinese, who arrived here in 1853, and so they have a, a, a slightly older history with Suriname. We have excellent relations with Brazil. Right now about 7% of our population is are of Brazilian origin and of course uh, we have ties with South Africa and with Russia but the fields of cooperation have not been well defined as yet. Recently Suriname made headlines for the arrest of two terror suspects, Dutch terror suspects. How big a threat is terrorism in this part of the world, uh, and especially terrorism emanating from the ISIS? Of course, terrorism is, is high on our agenda, as for many countries in the world. And the only way we feel that we could really fight it is when we put our hands together and cooperate internationally to get rid of this evil. So when we got the information that terrorists had landed here, we acted with great urgency and we have been able to arrest both individuals and they are now part in the process of being criminally prosecuted. We know that ISIS have announced that they are recruiting people in South America. So far Suriname has no indication that that is going on within our borders. We have experienced that very often social media are abused to put out messages that are fake news, have a destabilizing effect on Suriname, or could have. But most of the time, we take it serious, we check it out, and if it's fake news, we use these same channels to make it clear what is really going on. You mentioned fake news and I cannot talk, not talk about Donald Trump. What do you think about his policy on immigration and his, his controversial measures like the zero tolerance policy where he separated families at the border? We know that the illegal immigration is a historic and, and global uh, phenomenon. And as such, if we want to deal with it properly, we would have to cooperate internationally. Uh, we are aware of the fact that transborder problems of this nature are historic 
and they are a present danger and we find that the sources of that sometimes are political, sometimes they are purely economic, people are looking for a better life elsewhere, sometimes they are caused by mismanagement of governments, sometimes they are caused by the fact that wars and uh, tribulations of those kinds cause people to leave their own land to find their future in another country. But again, this is a historic fact, it's an actual fact, and the only way we can deal with it in a sensible way if we find the right international cooperation and the principles of human rights to deal with them properly. It is important to realize that once we are dealing with these matters, human rights become very important. At the same time, we have to deal with it, dealing with the facts as they are, and try to find the most reasonable solution for any problem that presents itself. So although there, can, there are no rules to be put to any country, at the same time, the principles would apply in any one country, also in Suriname. That's a debate that's far from settled. Uh, I'm going to thank you, sir, though, for your time. And uh, please accept my compliments. It's a beautiful country. It feels a lot like home. Thank you very much for being with us on the show. The president compliments you. And as far as he's concerned, you're welcome to stay in Suriname. Thank you.